Just want to do a little week in review. First of all, we've got some Porsche 911 videos where we show you how to save thousands. So if you're selling a vehicle and your exterior is dirty, your interior is a little dirty, you might think, oh, well, it's just a little bit of dirt. Having a clean vehicle and, you know, I've been in the vehicle automobile business selling vehicles, working at a dealer and more so, you know, involved in the dealership. D dirty vehicles will have you lose thousands of dollars. You need these vehicles, you know, people buy when they have an emotional response to something. You need to have it shining. Now there's a ton of stone chips on this vehicle. So we filled in the stone chips. We changed the center caps on the vehicle. The seat was ripped up on the inside and the paint was dull and scratched up. So what did I do? I paid $250 for a compound and polish because I didn't have time to do it myself. I then did four coats of ceramic detailer and this seat myself. was not expensive to repair. So that was, was free. The seat, well, the seat, actually, the seat and the roof was uh, with taxes, $586, but not that expensive not that for a vehicle that generally people were asking $10,000 more than I paid for. And those are the better priced ones. So the the, the low end of the market is $10,000 more than I paid. The high end of the market is $20,000 more than I paid. So not only do you lose thousands, you might lose more than thousands of dollars because you didn't wash your vehicle. So really important to wash your vehicle, fix any little problems with the vehicle, like a torn seat. And it looks like we might have... No, it's my phone. Oh, it's just your phone. Well, that's great. Good, good, good. So just doing important, you know, shine the interior, shine the exterior. Don't be afraid. Just like a house... Unfortunately, some people only renovate their house right before they sell it. Enjoy some of those renovations for yourself. Same thing for a vehicle. You know, we've had the lights pol like we had the lights polished. I po started polishing them up. I brought them half of the way, paid to have them polished off more. Well, now there's missing clear coat on some of them, so I'm going to re-sand them and clear coat them myself. But an easy point to make is this car can look like it's worth $20,000 more with just a little bit of money so you can make a lot of money you can save a lot of money getting your vehicle properly ready for sale and you can make a lot of money buying and then reselling vehicles buy from people that don't want to put the effort or don't have the faith you know that their vehicle can be better now bit of week in review the electrification of vehicles is leading to the demise of petrol vehicles it's costing dealerships a lot so here's my dealership this is a costly repair, not repair, but upgrade. So we're Ford, very clever, is getting all the dealerships to pay for these EV chargers. So the dealerships are paying, but as an EV owner, your network of available chargers is about to explode because the dealers that are selling, Ford is trying in the New York state, there's a law case saying no, Ford cannot force a dealer to put in uh, electric chargers because they want to sell the electric vehicles. But generally, pretty much all the dealers will be putting in electric chargers. At least 60% of Ford dealers will have fast chargers, two of them available 24-7, meaning there's a Ford dealer pretty much everywhere. We'll be able to get to Florida easily just by stopping in at Ford dealers. And you know I like to check other dealers' inventories out. Mm -hmm. Speaking about other dealers' inventories, please, this week, check out just a few days, two days ago, Friday, uh, Saturday. Saturday night came out with the video talking about the, the new vehicle market, sales and whatnot. Check that video out. But two neat, neat things from this week. Yes, we have Broncos for sale at MSRP. Interest rate is a little high, but better than a used one. So if you can put down as much cash as possible to help save you thousands of dollars, please do that. EVs is going to cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some dealers, if they are zero prepared for the EV move, it's going to cost them a little over a million dollars per dealer to get this network going. So that's an advantage. Service is something that, you know, Tesla can't offer, you know buying service after service you know when your vehicle needs an up you know it needs a recall or a repair 
it's it's useful having dealerships, but the model does need to change. I think that you know set pricing that's standardized is important. You know, you wouldn't be happy if you had to go shop at different Walmarts, 10 different Walmarts, just to do your back to school shopping for your kids. Imagine, you know, you're going to spend a thousand dollars on clothes, but you have to go to 10 different Walmarts to negotiate that clothes. It's just silly. So let's, let's hope that's something that's uh, of days past. Now, if you're in the market, interesting vehicles, super duties, there are some available. Most of the time, it's a six-month to 12-month wait most of the time to get your Super Duty. The Ford Transit Connect is going to get built until December 22nd, and that's the model that we are saying bye to this year. Ford Transit Connect will no longer be available in North America. Then after that, for 2025, the Ford Escape is also out and gone. The Ford Edge will be replaced by an EV equivalent. So that's your big Ford news. I should have led with all the exciting news at the beginning, but I guess for all of those that have stuck in all the way to then, thank you so much. You're getting all the big stuff at then. We'll lead next live next week. We'll try to recap and lead with this. So Marie, make sure that I remember to do that. <laughs> but do check out the video because we talked about sales number and it's surprising. Volume at dealerships are actually pretty good despite the auto network. Uh, it, despite the UAW strike, so sorry I got a little off topic there. Marie was kicking me under the table because she vibrates that leg. So sales volume in September, it's actually higher than what it was expected to be. It's actually quite, sales were actually quite good across the industry. So Q3 2023, third quarter sales are up more than 15% compared to a year ago. Honda and Nissan actually had huge, like above 40% increases. And that's not because everyone's now instantly in love with Honda and Nissan way more than before. It's because in 2022, they had very low production and nothing sitting on the dealer lots. But all the main thing is they just had incredibly next to no production. So they weren't getting anything sold because they weren't getting anything built, really simply put. But we cover this, I cover this a lot better in the 15 minute video. So help us out, check it, check it out, please. But that was the big news that sales are surprisingly up, but rebates are also up. So there's more rebates than they were there were a year ago. So back in this winter, I was saying that I did predict that we'd have some you know, pretty decent rebates coming along the way for end of summer, early fall, they actually, I was wrong. We actually started to get some rebates in early summer, very late spring, uh, no, early summer. I, I predicted end of summer, we got it early summer, June, we started to see some rebates at manufacturers. Manufacturers Jeep still relatively low at only $1,500 rebate on a 2023 Wrangler, but with a $5,000 rebate on the F-150, well, we can say it, the F-150 has pretty nice sizable rebate and overall across the whole market even though sales are up from a year ago rebates are also up now fleet sales are also up and the reason fleet sales are up is because all manufacturers did the smart thing they know that fleet companies if they spend an extra year on maintenance and repairs you're not going to lose that client for life but a real customer that spends a year, an extra year with their vehicle and puts in maintenance and repairs they didn't expect, want to, or could afford into their vehicle, you might lose them for life. Then you know that $1,500 brake job and whatever other maintenance was due, that $1,500 might be the $1,500 that make them say, I will never buy another Dodge again, or another GM, another Ford, another Toyota. So manufacturers knew that they need to switch it's more important to swap customers to keep them happy and loyal. But now they're catching up in the decrease of fleet sales. They had a huge decrease in fleet sales, 2021, 2022. Now for 2023, fleet sales are carrying a lot of this growth. And a lot of Kia and Hyundai made some huge moves back in 2019. They're in seventh position for seventh most sold manufacturer, the the, the, the the Hyundai group, Hyundai Motor Group. And now they're in fourth. So they're right behind Ford. 
So they are catching up. And that's why Kia and Hyundai deal dealers, a lot of them aren't very flexible on price because they feel, they feel like they're the most sold brand. They feel like they're on top of the world because they got, it's kind of like when you become famous too quickly or you become really great at something too quickly. Well, too often, it's human nature to think you're better than everyone else. Or that's at least what tends to happen pretty often. And uh, so Kia, Hyundai, I think a lot of the dealers out there are fe feeling like they're better than everyone else and they're not very flexible on price. And back in 2019, they're unbelievably flexible on price because they were begging people to take their units. But now, watch out, build it online. They very well likely will try to sell you the vehicle more expensive than the internet price. So those were the big movers and shakers thus far for 2023. Sales have increased, but prices decreased. And that's weird because that's normally not the direction. Normally if sales increase, prices increase as well because demand has increased. But production has actually been pretty strong inventories are pretty high except toyota toyota has very low inventory and stellantis has very high inventory but their prices didn't decrease but their sales also decreased so they're gonna need to get desperate at some point they're gonna need to throw out rebates so if you're a stellantis fan hold on i'd say they they're gonna have to cave within six months they're gonna have to cave and get back to their old tradition of having huge rebates so i i think They'll be remaining in six months, they'll be remaining Jeeps on lots, and they're gonna have to discount them four to eight thousand dollars depending on the model. So that's our news for today to help save you thousands of dollars. Check out that market analysis video that we made uh, this past Saturday because we talked about all the important numbers. But yeah, the industry-wide inventory levels are up more than 63% from a year ago. That's an extra 800,000 units at dealer lots. So expect a better price, folks. Offer a better price. Be willing to walk away from deals if the dealer is still trying to sell over MSRP and build the vehicle online because that because the dealers, they're not in a position where they should be selling things over MSRP anymore. And a lot of dealers did, never did sell over MSRP. So, um, But on rare models like the Ford Bronco, you can't expect a rebate on that. Demand is still high. Super duties, demand is high. Supply is very low. So basically, if you're expecting, if you're looking, if you're shopping more for a rebate than you are the actual model, go with models that there are a lot of but that are, still have a good reputation when it comes to reputation uh, in, re in regards to reliability. And that's the big one. You know, Make sure you don't just get something because it has a huge rebate, but then it has a huge rebate because nobody wants it because it's unreliable. Make sure that it has a good, great reputation for reliability. Uh, M. Peugeot, have a great night. Thank you for sticking, it, sticking out to the end. We are at the end, folks. Uh, so that's the end. I just want to end it with some purchasing advice. Make sure you get a relatively reliable vehicle and expect rebates when there's a ton of inventory at the dealer for that model. But models that there's next to no inventory or none, like the Ford Maverick, Ford Bronco, you can't expect a, a rebate out of manufacturers, especially on top of it when it's a brand new model, when it's just been refreshed. Folks, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this, this far, please type in finisher. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Take care, everyone. Have a great night.